What's up, YouTube? This is Burfty2, and welcome to Black Ops 2 Zombies. Welcome back to Black Ops 2 Zombies. I did a stream about this game. I don't know if I talked about it a lot in that stream, but I got Black Ops 2 Zombies on my PC, and today I'm going to be doing the Pagamon Challenge on town. This is a challenge that has eluded me. Eluded me? I'm pretty sure I've never beaten it. It's not very hard. You just have to pack a bunch of all the guns on town. One of the easiest maps in all of Call of Duty. Uh, it's a very nostalgic challenge, since town is very fondly remembered by uh, most of people who have grown up in this decade. This generation. We all remember town playing with friends. I remember town playing with friends. I remember Black Ops 2 I'm back when I played it split screen with Dylan on the Black Ops... Xbox 360, sorry, I blanked for a second. I remember playing that at his house, split screen. And then I got a Wii U. I got Black Ops 2 on the Wii U. Don't judge me. And I made videos on the Wii U of Transit Town Farm. And I guess Bus Depot. Um, and you can't buy DLC on the Wii U version of this game, so. Uh, I only had Transit, which is very interesting. That Transit was like the only game I could play for this. Uh, the, the concept of DLC wasn't even really introduced to me at that point. What is this? M14. We're gonna have to get it at some point. Um, my sensitivity feels slow. I'm just gonna leave it for now. And then I got an Xbox 360 on November something. And that was the day my zombies... My zombies interest really kicked off because once you have your own console like a, a good con like you know an xbox where you can get dlc and it's like a next-gen console i mean i remember waiting counting not counting i did count the days i did count the days until i could get the xbox because my friend dylan i already talked about them once in this video so you know dylan everyone knows dylan um he had an xbox and he kept telling me to get one. Just get an Xbox, man. We've got to play zombies together since you have it on the Wii U. It's so much fun. So I started saving up. Scrimping and saving. I got November 14th, I think, was actually the day. And I got Infinite Warfare and Black Ops 3 with my with my Xbox. And I played, ooh, I played Shadows of Evil with this guy I met on Xbox Live. He was pretty cool. don't remember what his name was. But he was some random dude in Ohio. It's really awesome. How you can meet people on Xbox Live and just be friends with them. It's that rare little thing that happens when you play on Xbox. That makes it really cool. Anyway, it's round two. We're building points. We also don't have Jug or... Quick Revive. Where's the last zombie? Is he up there? Come down. Oh my god, I actually killed him. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna open this door first so we can get quick revive. Best not die. And we also have the box not in here. But we're not gonna hit the box for a little bit. We're just gonna get this Colt in there first. And then we'll buy an MP5. And then we'll put the M14 in there. And then we'll get the MP5 and then we can just work on the rest of the guns. But once we get to that point, it should be smooth sailing. Um, where did I leave off my story? So, I got, I had an Xbox One. And, you know, I, it's weird talking about this as if it's in the past. It feels like it was just yesterday. Because it was like, like, four years ago. So, it wasn't that long. I mean, I could be looking at this like a, from decades ago. Um, but I had Black Ops 3. And I had Infinite Warfare. I actually thought Infinite Warfare was a decent game before I realized that it was not a decent game. But I still enjoy Spaceland. Spaceland is one of my favorite maps. Like, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a video. I talk about it a lot, though. My top five maps are Origin, no, Derizendrak, Origins. Uh, Derizendrak, Origins. Grod Krovi, Shadows of Evil, and Spaceland. 
Um, I'm not a big fan of Mob of the Dead. I still like it. I still love it. I When I say I'm not a big fan of Mob of the Dead, I don't think it's a... It's hard for me to put it in, like, the top five maps because it, it's not really an atmosphere that I, I get in, engaged in. I think it's... For that map, it's very, like... I don't want to make a really like low-hanging fruit in terms of criticism about Mob of the Dead. It's very close quarters, but I always struggle on that map, and I consider myself to be an experienced zombies player. We're well over experienced. I, I consider myself a professional zombies player. Um, I struggle a lot with Mob of the Dead. I still think it's fun. I think it's really satisfying to set up on that map. Get the House Retriever, the Redeemer, the Plane Parts, uh, the Vitralic Withering. A lot of I love the Blundergat. I love all that stuff. It's great. There's just something about the map that makes me like when I go into play it, and then I play it, and then I'm just like, okay, that was Mob of the Dead, and then I move on. Whereas with Origins, I love playing Origins. I love playing Derise and Jock. I just I love I love what's so ruthlessly difficult about them, and how you have to be completely optimal when you play something like Origins. And you have to know everything you're doing. I think it's so... A lot of people think that's too complex for a map. I think it's the most rewarding feeling when you know how to do everything on Origins. And then you do it. Like, it's just like... I went from this little zombies player who didn't know how to pack a bunch on town. I seriously didn't know how to pack a bunch. I thought you had to get rid of the lava or something. Um... And then I turn into this guy who knows how to build four ultimate staves and get G-Strikes in one of the hardest maps in all the zombies. It's great. It's very rewarding. I need to get MP, M14 ammo. So that's why I love Origins. It's not... where Mob of the, I think the difference between something like Mob of the Dead and Origins in terms of difficulty is I think Mob of the Dead is not a difficult map because of like what you have to do in it. I think... You know, getting the Blundergat and the Hell's Redeemer, it's not really hard stuff, but I think the map, because it's facilitated in Alcatraz, a prison with narrow corridors, it makes that stuff way harder than it, it has to be. Whereas with Origins, it's like almost the opposite. Whereas the stuff you're doing is hard, and the, I mean, I guess the mud and the robots, but you know, you get what I'm saying. So that's what, that's why the difficulty on Mob of the Dead is so frustrating. It's not really. What I'm doing is hard, it's just the map is, is hard to work with. Um, Dryzen Jock's one of my favorite maps. This is my favorite map because of memories. Which seamlessly threads into where I was going to take off with the rest of my story. I'm just talking about my story before I get into the actual pack of punching. Since that is something to talk about before we get to the actual objective of this map. We're going to just be building points for a second here. Dryzen Jock was, I'm pretty sure, the first DLC I got for Black Ops 3. I didn't really play much of Spaceland. I mean, Infinite Warfare in general. I did not buy any... I bought Raven the Redwoods. Oh, no, I had the Season Pass for that game, so... I had all those maps. I didn't buy the Season Pass for Black Ops 3. I bought each uh, DLC individually. But I got DE. Played it a bunch with Caden and Dylan. Very fond memories. I love Horizon. It is, like, almost the perfect map. I feel like... With Origins, the difficulty gets... A, to a bit too much and maybe frustrating because it's RNG. I like the RNG sometimes because it makes the map more replayable. Whereas with Derizen Druck, everything gets kind of samey after a while. You play the game e the same every single time. Origins is not really the case, which is why I love it and why it's like one of the best maps. But Derizen Druck is very. It's very easy because it's in Black Ops 3. And. I kind of love that about it. It's cool. Anyway, that's the cult done. And now, uh... That's the Mustang and Sally. I'm not marking these off, but I probably should. Here, I'll get... I'm sorry, I just paused. I don't know if I'm going to edit this video. I might, because it's just like... I'll see it in my video folder. And just play, oh my god, it's an hour. I don't have time for this. So I'll just crop the beginning and crop the end. And that'll be it. Uh, hopefully I get a little more inspired with this one, but we, we, you guys be the judge of that if you can even hear me right now. 
All right, I'm pretty sure that's all guns. There might be a little couple of guns that are not in this map that I'll have to get rid of. Anyway, we're getting rid of the Mustang and Sally because I'm probably just going to kill myself with them. Anyway, where was I leaving off? So, yeah, DE is one of my favorite maps. Very, not just because of the nostalgic factor, it's, I mean, I, I shouldn't have to tell you this. The Rising Rock's a really strong map. I love the bows. I love setting up on that map. I love the Easter egg. The Easter egg's my favorite Easter egg ever. It's so easy. But, like, it's perfect. I don't know. It's a perfect first egg. It's quite simple. But I love the bows. I love the bows so much. The setting is amazing. It's awesome. I love Dorazin. Um, my... Okay, Grod Krovi. This is a map that's grown on me. I... I love Grod Krovi because there's not anything I don't like about Grod Krovi. I love the setting. I love the dragons. Oh. Okay, I hate when this happens. Rubber banding, basically. That's what this is. I might actually die. Whew. I hate that. So whenever the zombies stay still, it's because I'm lagging in the game, which makes no sense. But it's... My internet is so weird right now, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway. We are about to not finish off again because the round just ended. That sucks. Okay. What was I talking about? I hear stamina. A Grog Krovi. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Grog Krovi. I love Grog Krovi because there's nothing I don't like about it. The setting's awesome. I love the dragons. I love... I don't love the Easter egg, but it's a very rewarding Easter egg to finish because of how difficult it is. I love the Gauntlet of Siegfried. I love the PPSH. I love Ultimus Nikolai. I love how... Am incredibly like immersive the map is like it feels like you're in Stalingrad it's awesome you really get into like the Russian vibe with it it's a very fun map to just jump in, into and be like hell yeah Grad Krovi it's awesome love Grad Krovi it's very much a next gen map that's what I love about it okay well we got some crawlers here that's fun. Make sure I don't cook the grenade. That would be very bad. I didn't buy ammo. We're just going to buy the store. Um, I'm going to throw the M14 in there. Over here, zombies. Alright. Amnesia. What a classic. And then, um, oh, Shadows of Evil, what a map. Dude, Shadows of Evil is a masterpiece. I don't love it because the Easter Egg is four, it's not one of my favorites, you know, top three, because you have to do the Easter Egg with four players. Very, very silly, I hate that stuff. That's why I love most of Black Ops 3's Easter Eggs, you can do all of them solo, it's pretty cool. I love Shadows of Evil's aesthetic. Like, when? When you see Shadows of Evil for the first time, I Shadows of Evil is the reason I was like I need a I need a uh, an Xbox One. Shadows of Evil's entire like you play something like Town, and you just it, it's very old school, but it's, you, you kind of love it because it's just like a oh yeah zombies what could happen here? It's very exciting. Zombies in general is very exciting. Um. And then you load into Black Ops 3, that Shadows of Evil is such a, a beautiful city. You look at the skybox in the map and you feel like you're about to explore like an entire city. And the zombies aesthetic and the Lovecraft setting, it is amazing. The Shadow Man, and you, like, I was playing it with my friend Dylan, you know, for the first time, um, a long time ago. And like, you get in and you're like, and Dylan's guided me through the whole thing because I'm very new to zombies. Didn't have to. And you're like, whoa, rituals, summon a key. There's beast mode. Like, you think of all the potential there, and you're like, I need to get 
an Xbox One so I can experience this firsthand by myself at home. It sold me on it. It completely sold me on Black Ops 3. And, you know, it's a good map, so yeah, good. Um, I might not have... Okay, we're just not going to get stamina up, I think. But I, I definitely need double tap. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna save it for a pack of munch right now, though. So Shadows of Evil is definitely great, and then Space Land is just. Oh my God, Space Land is such a blast. Infinite Warfare gets too much hate. Space Land is seriously a well-designed, amazingly fun map. It doesn't try to be some amazing there. It's just goofy. It's fun. It's the '80s. I love the 80s vibe. I love how it's in the amusement park. I love the ticket system. I love all the little trinkets you can get. I love the Easter egg. I love setting up for that. I love all the ray guns. I seriously... Like, when I was younger, that Easter egg just scared me off because it was so hard. I think... I think the Easter egg's great. I seriously love it. I love Space Line. I go back any day to play Space Line. Which is weird because it's, you know, Infinite Warfare Zombies. No one likes that stuff. Um, I'm one of their very small fans. And that's pretty cool. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna buy Double Tap now, since I'm gonna have enough for a pack a bunch of mid-round. I'd probably just invest the points right now. Because... I need to. Um... I'm gonna trade out our M14 now. Okay, well, we're basically set up now. This is what's so fun about town. You can just jump in and be like, not care about anything. Like, I've been just talking about it. I've just been telling a story this whole time. But it's, like, fun. Because it's zombies and it's town. Everyone loves town. Even though it's an extension of transit, everyone still loves town. It's so cool. I don't know why I'm using the Olympia to make points. Because I'm just kind of training right now. Should I talk about my new mic? I feel like I just need something to talk about now. I never usually force myself to talk about things. I don't... I'm not really forcing myself to talk about things like, Come on, be funny, tell a whimsical story. I'm just... I, I like talking about things. I like to talk. And with zombies, there's not a lot to talk about. Um, the game is just very, like, you're doing something so that... There's a lot of pressure in commentating. Not pressure, but... Yeah, whatever. Just do it that. That's the MP5 done. I have not been marking these. MP5. M14. Okay, we're good. Um, okay, so this new microphone. This was so much trouble setting up. I had to get... So this is an XLR mic. It's a condenser mic. It's not an XLR mic. It's a condenser mic. Which requires XLR cables, which is not relevant at all. But... Condenser mics are highly directional, and they're very, like, studio quality. Well, I wouldn't say that, but they're definitely, like, they're not cheap mics. Condenser mics are very, um, you know, you, you talk into them. I don't, know, I don't know how to explain condenser mics to you in the way that makes sense. Highly directional, that's all I can say. Um, so, this mic was about $100, because I wanted to invest in something that was quality. I was tired of having my budget snowball. Even though the snowball's a great mic, I felt like it was time for an upgrade. I felt like I, I deserved an upgrade after like five years of a snowball. I love the snowball. If you're starting out with YouTube, get the snowball every way to Sunday. It is seriously so good. It's only 50 bucks. What a great mic for only 50 dollars. I can't believe how good the snowball is. It should not be that good. It's ridiculously good. Anyway, that's uh, Olympia done. Anyway, so that's my little promo for the snowball and get it. It's so good. I need to get a gun. I'm going to keep the Olympia for a little bit since I... Unless... Well, we'll see what we get from the box. Point gun or we get out of our way gun. Let's see what we keep. Hopefully it's... EMP. Not useful. Come on. Hammer. Perfect. 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 Okay. This mic was $100. It's really... That's not a bad price for a mic. Usually mic, good mics go for about like 120 bucks. This was kind of a bargain. But there are two versions of this mic. This is My mic is the AT2020. That's what this is. It's been around for a while. Very popular mic for YouTubers. 
you'll see this mic everywhere. This and the Blue Yeti. Um, there's a different version of this mic called the AT2020 USB Plus, which is a version of this mic that is a U USB port instead of an XLR microphone cable, which is a lot more convenient. A lot of people go for the USB Plus just because all it is is you plug one end into your microphone, the other end into your computer, bada bing, bada boom, you're sorted. It's a very different story with the XLR version of this mic, the original version. You have, with, okay, well this mic in general, because it's a condenser mic, it needs an extra power source, because this mic is 48 volts. And 48 volts is not, you'll need some sort of external thing. So, I didn't know that. I got the mic, I got an XLR to USB cable, and since that's one way to connect it without having to buy the USB Plus, you just get an XLR to USB adapter, plug it into your mic, plug it into your um, computer, it's the same deal. I got that. Didn't realize that it, I needed more power for it. I plugged it in, I was like, I tried out in Discord, and Milo and Matthew were just chilling in there. I was like, hello, can you guys hear me? Not working. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's just not a bug or I haven't set it up correctly. Nope. You need either a power bank or an audio interface. If you're me, uh, go for the audio interface. If you're going to get some sort of external thing, you definitely, I would definitely recommend an audio interface instead of just getting a power bank since an audio interface is built for microphones, whereas a power bank is just you know, more power. It's just a box that you put there and it gives more power to it. Um, whereas an interface, you plug your mic in it and it's like, it's, it, it, it it's more quality. So I bought in the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Again, a good choice if you're going for XLR uh, audio interfaces for streaming. I, l I love it, by the way. This audio interface is really nice. Anyway, that's the hammer done. Hammer. Where? There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. So we have the sledgehammer. Moving on to our Olympia hun. Unless, well, we'll see what we get. M1A1. Alright. Throw our hammer in. Ooh, wow, it's actually round 15. I didn't realize that. Okay. Woo! Okay, let's not hit the fire here. Okay, what was I talking about? Anyway, so I... I realized that I had to get an audio interface. I was very upset. I just come on. I I'm so tired of having to, you know, get other things for it. Uh, my fault for not knowing and not realizing that that was something I needed to do. It's it's all my fault. But I was a little bit upset. So I ordered this. I had the microphones Oh. I had the microphone and the cable all ready to be used just sitting under my desk for 2 weeks waiting for the, the audio interface. Very upsetting. I had to use my still when I had the microphone right there, and I still couldn't use it. Um, so the audio interface arrives, and it's working. Uh, it still it didn't work for a second, so I was like, "Oh God, is it not working?" Um, just a little bit of setup. I had a mini heart attack for a second there, but it was fine. Got it working, and here we are today. So the mic cost me around two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, and I had to get a, a different. I had to get a different cord as well. I had to trade in my XLR to USB and get an XLR to XLR cable to plug into the audio interface. So, yeah, the mic cost me about two hundred fifty bucks. Hundred bucks for the mic, hundred bucks for the audio interface, and fifty bucks for each cable. Not fun, but I don't know. It might have been worth it. It looks cool at least, and I love the audio interface. So yeah. That's the story of my AT2020. And here we are today. When you can just get a snowball for 50 bucks, plug it into your computer, and you'll get basically the same thing. But it's cool! Because now I actually feel like I have quality running into my, uh, into my computer. Anyway, that was my little story. I am going to die. <laughs> as soon as I stop telling the story, I die. It's fine, I have enough for Jug. I should have blown up this way since I need to get the Jug. Okay. Two hit downs. Two hit downs. Two hit. No! 
<laughs> no. I'm going again. Although this is a scary place to do it. Need to make the most of this double points while it lasts. Oh, I certainly did. That's 7k right there. Oh my... It was all because of the lava. I was sitting on that one little sliver, and I was just tss, tss, tss. that was like two hits of damage, and then one zombie hit me, and then one from the left. Oh my god! I didn't get red screen. I just went straight down. Oh my god! I'm so upset. No. Well, that that's it. I've been recording for like two hours. Well, I guess that's an, an hour and fifteen minutes. Okay, never mind. Well, this was my first... Well, I did the video about the hacker. This is my official first video with this new microphone. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you did a like and comment. I think... And remember, stay gamer.